in sports. We talk a lot about impact players who make a positive difference. When it comes to our state's economy, the North Carolina pork industry is a true MVP. Each year, the pork industry plays an important role in supporting rural communities across our state. It contributes more than $10 billion a year to the North Carolina economy and supports more than 44,000 jobs. Learn more about their positive impact at ncpork.org. The North Carolina Pork Council, the foundational partner of the North Carolina Sports Network. Hey folks, welcome back to the David Glenn Show. Here in this latter half of October, we have a handful of truly awesome college football stories unfolding here in North Carolina. Hall of Fame UNC coach Mac Brown, one of our recent guests here on the North Carolina Sports Network, has the Tar Heels off to a 6-0 start, a top 10 national ranking, and offers some of the most exciting players in the ACC with quarterback Drake May, running back Omarion Hampton, recently freed from the NCAA dungeon wide receiver Tez Walker, defensive end Cayman Rucker, linebackers Cedric Gray and Power Eccles, and defensive back slash return man Elijah Huzzy, another of our recent guests here on the David Glenn Show second-year Duke coach and longtime defensive guru Mike Elko, last year's ACC Coach of the Year, has the Blue Devils off to a 5-1 and one start and a number 16 national ranking. As they travel to Tallahassee this weekend to take on number four Florida State, the Devils rank alongside number two Michigan, number three Ohio State, and number seven Penn State as the only FBS teams giving up fewer than 10 points per game. Elsewhere, North Carolina Central, the defending HBCU national champion under coach Trey Oliver, is now in the FCS top 10, the highest FCS ranking in that program's history. And Lenore Ryan is 6-0 at the Division II level, where the Bears played in the national title game 10 years ago and have populated the national top 25 on many other occasions, including right now, as they're ranked number 10 nationally in this week's coaches poll. There are 33 major college football teams here in North Carolina, and only two, 6-0 UNC and 6-0 Lenore Ryan, remain among the dwindling ranks of the unbeaten, as we enter this latter half of the regular season. Meanwhile, one more amazing college football story is unfolding right now in our backyard. This one in Cullowhee, North Carolina, which you haven't, if you haven't been there, is southwest of Asheville. So way out there in the Appalachian Mountains in the southwestern part of our state, not too far actually from both the Tennessee border to the west and the Georgia and South Carolina borders to the south. Third-year Western Carolina head coach Kerwin Bell, a former walk-on turned Florida Gators star quarterback and SEC champion in the 1980s, and a guy who, as a head coach, won the Division II national title just five years ago at Valdosta State, has Western football on the national map in a way I have not seen in my 37 years covering sports here in our great state. There is only one Top 10 versus top 10 matchup at the FBS level this week. That's 6 and 0 Penn State at 6 and 0 Ohio State. There's also a couple top 10 versus top 10 matchups at the FCS level this week. And we are bringing our Old North State tailgate and traveling sports circus to the one happening right here in our backyard. Number 4 Furman versus number 9 Western Carolina in Cullowhee on Saturday. We hope folks will look for Mike Waddell and me early Saturday afternoon before the game as our tents, prizes, giveaways, and football toss game will be set up right there near Whitmire Stadium from noon to 2 p.m. before the 2.30 kickoff between the Catamounts and the Paladins. Some quick background as we welcome Coach Bell to the David Glenn Show today for the first time. In the last 30 years, there is only one example of a Western Carolina football coach having even back-to-back -back winning seasons. Coach Bell is in the process of doing that right now. The last time the Catamounts finished in the national top 25 
was in 1984. That's almost 40 years ago. Coach Bell has his Catamounts ranked in the midseason national top 10 in one of the FCS polls as we speak. Two weekends ago, Western went on the road and beat a top 25 Chattanooga team 52 to 50 to stay undefeated in Southern Conference play. Now, the 5-1 and one Catamounts are hosting, this Saturday afternoon, arguably the biggest regular season game in program history. The oldest restaurant in New Hanover County has a brand new look, feel, and taste, making it the number one place for great food in Wrightsville Beach. Owner Jimmy Galise and his wife Keaton have poured their hearts and soul into the reformation of this North Carolina coastal classic restaurant and the impact has been fantastic. King Neptune serves fresh fish, chicken, and steak and has an amazing wine and spirits to lift your dining experience to the make it the best at the beach. Come taste the creations of Chef Chavez and you'll know that you have tasted a little bit of heaven right there in Wrightsville Beach. That's King Neptune. Call them at 910-239-3055 and make your reservation now. King Neptune and Wrightsville Beach, a proud partner of the North Carolina Sports Network. Okay, without further ado, he was a Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, an SEC champion, and an NFL and CFL quarterback during his playing days. He's already been a Division II national champion as a head coach. He has Western Carolina off to one of the most exciting starts in the 90 plus year history of Catamounts football. And his team hosts both one of the biggest games of the upcoming college football weekend and arguably one of the biggest regular season games in Western Carolina football history. Coach Kerwin Bell, congratulations on your team's thrilling five and one start. And welcome to the David Glenn Show. How are you? Well, it's good to be here. And, um, you know, we're excited about this game and we've put ourselves in a position to to um, go enjoy a, a big time game and play and be involved in it. So we're looking forward to go play one of our better games of the year. Coach, three years ago, immediately before your arrival in Cullowee, Western had won only a single football game that season. Now you're in year three, you're five and one, you're in the national top 10 of one of the polls, and you have at least a chance at the first Southern Conference football title in school history. I know you're not looking ahead, but how has this amazing turnaround happened so quickly? Well, you know, I've, I've, I've had some experiences of building programs, so uh, I've taken a lot of that experience, and now I have a strong conviction on how to do it. And so, um, you know, I think the first, there's two things that have to happen when you go to build a program. And uh, the first is you got to improve your roster, right? You got to develop, you got to come, you got to infuse talent to the point where you can compete for a championship. And I think we've turned over probably 100 out of 120 players on our roster in the last two and a half years. Uh, we brought in the kind of guys that I wanted to have that builds that culture that I want in that locker room. And that is self starters, guys who want to be great, guys who will come here on the weekends during the offseason and work on their own. Um, we we recruit that kind of player just like the physical ability of a player. Uh, we make sure they have those qualities. Uh, so we have a now we have a locker room full of guys who truly want to be great, who truly love the game of football. Who's there? That's our number one thing. You know, it's not going to nightclubs and just because you play football and you're good at it, you play football. These guys truly want to play at the next level. They want to see how good they can really be. And so we've got a great locker room full of guys who love the game of football now. Um, and then I think the second phase you got to get to, and you hope you get to it before you get fired. Um, <laughs> that's see, that's season two or three. Hoping summertime. It's always happened to me by season three. I, I put this on my players. I said, "Listen, I've won a championship wherever I've been by the third year." So I put a lot of pressure on my guys this year. But really, by the third year, you're hoping that you've seen that DNA, that championship DNA, develop with your team. And that is, think about it, because when you get here, you're going to build that team roster. You know, bring in a bunch of new players. So you got a bunch of individuals who really don't know each other, that don't trust each other, don't really play for each other. They play more. They're here and they're individuals. So you hope by that year two or three, you find that DNA, that linkage, where guys start playing for each other and start trusting each other and quit looking right and left. They just look straight ahead. And uh, I've seen that last year, the last three games of the year. If you don't know, we won our last three games of the season last year, beat Chat, who was the 15th ranked team in the country, finished six and five. 
And I made the statement in January, we came back that all season, hey, this championship or bust. And I truly believe that because I seen that second phase you have to get to, to to compete for a championship. And so we're at that stage now where we can go win it because this team truly believes in each other. They want to play for each other. They love each other. Uh, and um, and they really trust each other. So we felt like this all season was that sort of mantra's championship or bus. Our guys have committed to that. And uh, we've decided every day to get up every day and be the best teammates we can be. And and that's why we're where we're at right now with the opportunity to do some great things. Coach, we're such a big state here in North Carolina. You know, I teach at UNC Wilmington all the way by the coast. You're not far from the Tennessee border. I'm based in Raleigh. We've been writing about you from afar for a couple months now. I mean, your offense is so much fun to watch, that road victory a couple weeks ago. How would you describe to those of us who are maybe watching from a little bit afar just the reactions of either the Western Carolina student body, univer- you know, university as officials, or, or that surrounding community there in the southwest part of our state now that you're 5-1? and one? Well, you know, that's why I came here. I was so excited when I got here because I, I started, you know, looking at the history of this program and never won a championship here. Uh, never had experienced that sort of the great season other than 83 where they got to the national championship game and lost. Uh, just being able to build a program that people could be proud of. And and when you get here and you start hearing and, and seeing the people's passion for the game of football here in Western Carolina, it brought me back to my days as a college player and I've told our guys this sort of this experience. I, I was at the University of Florida in 1984 as a redshirt freshman. We, I was a starting quarterback. We went and won the SEC championship for the first time in the history of Florida football. People think Florida won a lot of championships. Right. I never had won an SEC championship in 60 years. And um, I remember flying back from Kentucky with our team after winning it uh, in November of 1984. And we get off our, you know, go to the um, – get back to Gainesville and we're riding in on buses and uh, their streets are full of people stadiums getting, you know, people are filling up the stadium just to see us that night. And I seen 60 year old men crying. And um, I tell our kids right now, you know, I said, how special is it that 18 to 22 years ago, your mom and dad had you for this moment, for this moment to make a decision to come to Western Carolina and be a part of this football team that has a chance to do something that's never been done in the history of this program. And that's the win of so- so- uh, SOCON Championship, Southern Conference Championship. And uh, I really believe on a smaller scale, we're going to see that what I've seen back in 1984. We don't see grown men crying here. So we're trying to do something that's never been done before. And um, our kids are excited. They're focused. And um, this is going to be a big game uh, to head us in that direction. Coach, I hope I'm going to press you with this little factoid because I've been at this as a journalist, you know, about as long as you've been at this as a coach. As you just referred to there, some folks have this picture of Florida Gators football that's probably more decorated and illustrious than it actually was. Because if I remember correctly, in the 70s and 80s, much like today, Alabama and Georgia were winning almost all of the SEC football titles. And then you're part of that breakthrough with the Gators. Do you am I being corny if I say there are parallels between the Gators breakthrough story from 40 years ago uh, beyond the emotions that you just described and, and this current attempt at a breakthrough at Western Carolina? Because there seems to be a lot of commonalities there. Well, I think it starts at the top, right? Yeah, I think at the University of Florida in 1990, they made a decision. Great athletic director and president who made a decision to go with Steve Spurrier, who took their program to a different level, right? and uh, made that commitment to football. Um, that's why I was uh, ready to get, be hired here. I, I committed here because after talking to the chancellor, uh, Chancellor Brown, and then our AD, Gary, Alex Gary, who's a really good guy who played ball here, so he's invested big time in this university. Uh, great AD, young AD. I felt like the two guys above me really wanted this to happen. They really want to see the success of this university in the game of football. And uh, it, it takes that, right? It takes that. It took that at University of Florida. It takes it at any program. You can't do it alone. You have to have a village to get it done. And I think we're in, we've got great leadership here that can, and that's why we're where we're at today. Coach, take us back to 2021. It was a weird time in college football. I mentioned you had been a national championship coach at Valdosta State. Then you were an assistant at South Florida. Then COVID hit and all kinds of weird things happened. 
Uh, some even had their you know seasons canceled. I remember the Catamounts were one and eight the year before you got there in that shortened season. How? What was going on in your world? Were, were you just itching to get back into being a head coach and sent some resumes out? Um, how did it come together that this job specifically was the one that kind of rose to the top of, of your desk? Well, you know, I've never been a, I've always been a head coach other than that one year at South Florida. My whole career is crazy how it's worked out is that, you know, I played ball until I was 34 years old, 13 years professionally, Canadian Football League, NFL, moved around a lot. Um, coached then up in Canada as a player coach my last couple of years in Toronto. Uh, but when I got into coaching, you know, I, I just became a head coach. It sort of, you know, I got offered this job at a high school and I said, well, let me see if I can do this. I, I think I'm pretty good at it. And then moved straight to Jacksonville University as a head coach. So I was always, I've been a head coach at Valdosta State. And then, um, so I knew I wanted to get back. I knew my strengths and where I was at as a head co as a coach. I wanted to be a head coach again. Uh, I had my opportunity to be the OC there for a year at South Florida. And we didn't, you know, didn't get kept after that one year with Charlie Strong. He got fired. But I just feel like that's some of my strengths is building programs, building relationships with young men. And uh, I just felt like that was something I wanted to do as I get later in my career. And uh, this opportunity came up. I think there was a search committee that had me at the top of this search. They thought I fit perfect with what they were looking for, uh, a proven winner, a guy who's won championships, and a guy who's, who's small town, got small town roots, which I do back in Florida. So I think it was a perfect fit. And I came up and interviewed. Like I said, when I met with Alex and then especially the chancellor also, you had a feeling that this thing was heading in the, in the right direction. It just needed somebody to come here and um, and build this thing. And, and that's what we've been able to do. There's a great story from our state's college football culture where Chuck Amato, the longtime Florida State yep. assistant coach, he takes the NC State job, you know, a couple decades ago, and he really made the state of Florida that you just referred to. Of course, he also, as you recruit North Carolina, so did Coach Amato. But it was – the numbers were crazy, Coach. I mean, he just had this pipeline to the Sunshine State and as I watch your team from afar, I see, you know, there's a 40 plus guys on your roster. I don't know how many of them are scholarship guys, but 40 plus on your roster from the state of Florida, star sophomore quarterback, Cole Gonzalez, star running back, Desmond Reed, star wide receiver, Sincere Lee, and a whole bunch of other dudes. Uh, why are the Sunshine State High School ranks such an essential part of your plan at Western Carolina? Well, I think the one thing, there was two things. First of all, I believe in, in Florida kids. I I've, I've grew up in the state of Florida, I believe, especially in South Florida kids. Every South Florida kid I ever got, they are, they do. I think when you, I think when you miss at this level, you don't miss talent wise, right? We all see the talent in the kid. I think what you miss is that can that kid adapt to the next level when they're got, the guys are just as big and as fast as they've been uh, in high school. Uh, I think some kids can't adapt to that, uh, that now all of a sudden they're playing against guys just as big and fast and can hit just as hard as they can. Miami kids have grown up having to compete their whole life since they were five years old because there's so much talent down there that going to the next level for them is nothing. So you're going to – Miami kids are going to play as freshmen because their their confidence level is out off the charts, right? They don't believe that they've moved up to any level at all when they get to college. Uh, but it's really the number one phase is why we did it. You know, the last two years we've been blessed. We, I think 247 has us, you know, it's the number one recruiting class in the SOCON. I think we were third in the nation. So we brought in some very talented kids. I think the portals help us because yeah. there's so many kids left out there without any scholarships because a lot of colleges now are good go with the transfers. So that's opened up the door for us. And then, you know, just our experience when we got here, Listen, we want to recruit Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. If we can't find enough guys to go win championships in those five states, then we're not doing a good job. But early on, um, you know, when we first got here, like you say, they were one and eight. I think they'd won four games over four years or something, three years. So, you know, when you offer a kid here in the state, naturally they'll say, well, let me see if I can find something a little bit better, right? Um, and that's, that's probably – the way it should be, um, you know, because of the history of our program the last three or four years. But 
uh, Florida kids, because we'd had so much success with them at Jacksonville University. We'd won championships there. We won a national championship when we recruited a bunch of them to go to Valdosta State. Those high school coaches down there said, you know, these kids are getting dropped from FBS. They're, they were FBS talented kids, and they were getting dropped. And we were coming in there, and the, and the coaches down there said, man, if y'all get offered by Coach Bell, Western Carolina, take the offer. Because, first of all, he's going to take care of you because we've had history with those guys, and they know me. And then they know we're going to build a great program, and they're going to be involved in a great system. And so – we got so much momentum. You know, Desmond Reed, that rate, the star running back, was one of the first ones to commit two years ago when we first got here. And, um, man, he just – we had momentum. And, and, you know, I think now as we built this program and starting to win, now you'll start being able to get those – North. now you offer a North Carolina kid, they're going to be more serious. In fact, we've got some commitments right now. It's early here in North Carolina. So uh, that's sort of how it's evolved. Um but I believe, you know, we're going to recruit those five states. And with that, I think, you know, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, that, that's just some good recruiting. And I think we've got a chance to, like I say, have a great program. The one thing I think everybody always said, well, Kerwin, you don't come here and recruit these Florida, Georgia guys, and they're gonna, not going to stay, right? Retention. I've always heard the retention is the problem here. It's not getting the kids here. It's getting them to stay here. I believe there's always a niche you try to find it, that if you're going to be great at a program or you don't develop a program, you got to find the niche that's going to keep you on top. And for us, it's this. We recruit kids, and I said a little bit earlier, our, there's two kind of kids in Florida, I know for sure. I've crewed that state for a lot of the years. There's two kids. There's the kids that, that are not club kids, right? They want to be in a big city. They want to go to nightclubs. They play football because they're good at it. That's the only reason why they play it. We don't want those kids. If we're on one of those kids, we get off of them. Because even if they come here and play a year, they don't leave, right? We want that kid that wants to leave Miami. They want to go. They don't care where they go. They want somewhere safe where they can get an education, where they can play football at the highest level, where they can be developed and hopefully make it to the next level. They love the game that much. That's that's their whole – you go on their social media and on, on Christmas Day, they're working out. I want those kind of guys. And when, that's the kind of guys we brought up here is those kind of guys. And they love it up here. They love the, you know, being safe and the environment and the beautiful mountains. And they love the opportunity to come here and develop into a great football player in a great system that showcases their talents and that gives them a chance to hopefully play at the next level. It's funny, Coach. You just answered my next question about – Getting guys in some of those cases, I lived in Northwest Miami for a little while, which, yeah. as you know, that's some tough turf there. Yeah. Um, you know, my university had chain link fence up around it and there were some tough neighborhoods around there. So I, I can I'm originally a Pennsylvania boy. So the whole lore of coming to Florida was great. You know, no more shoveling snow, but it's an entirely it's a fascinating pitch to get the southern guy to come north. But having lived in Miami, I think I understand the yeah. nature of that pitch. Uh, Kerwin Bell is joining us, Western Carolina head football coach. He is in the midst of an amazing season, and he has really put together an amazing story in his three years with the Catamounts. Coach, when that Valdosta State team that you and I both mentioned won the D2 title, that was five years ago, this is a crazy number to me. You averaged for the season 52 points per game, 5-2. I just want to say that twice so people understand. This year at Western, you're at 41 or so points per game. That's number five in the entire nation, best in the Southern Conference. What's the best or simplest way just to start with your – what is your offensive philosophy, uh, maybe for a casual fan to understand the way you go about things? Well, first of all, I, I, I'm hoping we can win the, the national scoring title again, or, you know, number one offense in the nation. We, we, and I don't know if anybody's ever done this. I'd like to see um, if we do, it'd be three different universities. We've led the nation in offense. Wow. We left it, led it in that. And, and um, I think it was 2010, we led the nation in offense at Jacksonville University as a non scholarship program, uh, led the nation in, in total offense. In scoring, and then you know, like you said, in eighteen at Valdosta State, we led the Division Two, uh, which was all colleges. We led uh, fifty-two points a, a game, and here I think we've got a chance to do that with this offense. But it starts with you know, twenty-something years ago, I was in the NFL, and um, I was with Lindy Infante, who's passed away. Uh, yeah. 
but he was a great – one of the smartest guys I've ever been around, was head coach of the Colts, the Green Bay Packers. Um, I used a lot of his terminology and a lot of his – horizontal passing game. He really stretched the field horizontally. I thought really well, great run game to go with it. And then I'd also been uh, in, in 1990, my first year, um, or Steve Spurrier's first year at Florida. Uh, I tore my ACLs with the Buccaneers playing pickup basketball. They released me. It was non-football during the off season. Steve Spurrier just got the job. I never even thought about coaching up until this point. I was two years after graduating from college. I graduated in 88, got drafted by the Dolphins. Uh, never got a degree in psychology, but went to the University of Florida as a GA, had reconstruction knee surgery, missed a year of football. Should have probably stayed in coaching at that time, <laughs> but I wound up going back and played another 10 years professionally before I got into coaching. But wound up being a GA that first year, and I, I seen perfection almost on the field. And now, like, my son is taking our offense sort of in a different direction a little bit. We, we still is based what we, we've done for 20-something years. But he's added a lot of things. But the one thing we will always keep in this system, he knows it better it better show up every day. <laughs> and that is the precision, the timing, the spacing of routes. I want it to look beautiful when we do it. I don't want it to be all top of, on top of each other. I don't want to be throwing jump balls to receivers. To me, that's not coaching. Coaching is getting people wide open, getting them in space, and then we we have to recruit those kind of players. Drop your hips who can get in and out of the routes, who can then catch the ball and be explosive with the ball. We're not going to recruit a 6'2", 200-pound receiver because he looks good getting off the bus. If he's stiff and has no ball skills, we're not going to jump balls. We're not going to throw jump balls to you. So we want guys, I don't care if they're 5'10", if they are explosive in and out of cuts, we're going to get them open. And um, and so that's what this offense is about is we call it, you know, play fast, score faster, Right. And what we mean by that is we don't care if it takes one player or six plays. We're trying to score. That's the name of the game. I hear people talk about all the time, oh, time of possession. But I don't see on that scoreboard anywhere they put the time <laughs> of possession for wins and losses. Um, you know, I think it, uh, against um, against Sanford, we had the ball 40-something minutes and we won the game. So that's great. I, I'll take that. I like that, you know. Sure. But the other day against Chattanooga, we only had 19 minutes. They had it 40 minutes, and we still won the game. <laughs> so it's who has the most points at the end, who can create the most explosive plays. And that's what we're about. And th people think we throw it all over the park, sort of like Steve did. Everybody thought he was just doing it everywhere. But if you go back and really study Coach Spurrier, he was a very balanced game coach. He ran the ball, but he made you think about defending the pass first. And that's what we try to do here. We try to be so efficient throwing the football that now you have to maybe walk your backers out a little bit wider. Now you're creating these running lanes for explosive plays. And then Desmond, when you have a Desmond Reed back there, who's a special talent, it gives you a chance to be very explosive. And that's, that's sort of where we're at right now. Real quick on Steve Spurrier. I just want everybody to know, I know, you know, this coach, but since you brought up that story, when coach bell was hired at Western Carolina, one of the quotes embedded into the release was from Steve Spurrier. And he made reference to your time together, but part of his quote was, and I wrote it down to make sure I didn't mess it up. Kerwin will bring championships to Western Carolina, uh, which is a bold statement. And you might be you know, on your way to making that statement true at Western, as you've already done, as you said, uh, in other places. I, I've interviewed Coach Spurrier many times. I've interviewed Mac Brown many times. I don't know you yet well enough to know your full personality, although you're a lot of fun to talk to. I already know that. <laughs> Tell me this, Coach, just from the human side, I don't know your roster super well, but I, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think your kicker, who who hit the game winner 52-50 at Chattanooga, he's mm -hmm. a veteran guy, right? So he's – tell me what it's been like to see these seniors or fourth or fifth year guys who went through one and eight. And that guy was in a position, if he misses the field goal, you guys lose the game. He makes it, and you've got a shot at a Southern Conference title, man. It hits my heart, and I don't even know the young man. Tell yeah. us about that part of your process. Well, like you say, you know, I said I brought in 100 new players in the last two years, but there's 20 of them guys that's, that's been here. A lot of them are fifth and sixth year guys. You know, Tyler Smith, our left tackle, yeah. probably could have got a chance, would have got a chance at the NFL last year. Came back because he's seen there was something. He'd been here five years. He's like, Coach, I want to experience something great before I leave here. I've been through so many tough times and, 
he came back, which really helped us up front with his experience. And Christian Coulter, the left guard, also came back, um, who both will get a chance, I think, at the next level. So that's really uh, – and I said that my whole summer was I thought we had one of the best offensive lines in the country in FCS, and I think they're showing that. Um, but, yeah, a guy like him and then Clayton Bardall is a guy, six-year tight end who's wanting to come back. And he already had his degree in engineering. already had a job set up. But he's like, Coach, I want the experience greatness before I leave. And just those guys. And then Richard McCollum. You know, Richard is the kicker. He's been unbelievable for us, automatic. And I knew once we got on the right hash, because he loves the middle to right hash, um, that it was – as long as we blocked well and didn't get it blocked, that it was going to be good. He was, he's that automatic. And for him to come through at that time was was big for our football team. Coach Furman has won more SoCon football titles than any other school. Their only loss this season was to South Carolina of the SEC. As you have that best scoring offense we mentioned, 41 points per game, Paladins have the best scoring defense in the SoCon to this point at 22 points per game. We're actually bringing – I don't know if you know this. We have something called the Old North State Tailgate and Traveling Sports Circus. So we went to North Carolina, South Carolina, and Charlotte way back. And, and we've been to ECU at App State, and we go to State Clemson, and, and we we're just at Miami, Carolina. Uh, we're coming to see you. So oh, we're, exci yeah. we're excited about that. We hope to shake your hand at some point. Yeah. But for those watching us today, these are two really good football teams. What do you circle as possible keys to this matchup? Well, I think if you first just look at both overall teams, you got a veteran team. I mean, 18 starters back for them, and they do such a good job with their program. You know, Coach over there, Coach Clay's done – Hendricks has done a great job of just keeping guys, retaining guys, and getting guys to believe in the program and redshirting them and playing a lot of fourth-year juniors, fifth-year seniors. And um, so they're a veteran group that knows how to win. They've been around for a long time. they got a lot of experience. And all of a sudden, it's a contrast between this group here that's the upstart for us that's a lot playing a lot of young guys. It's crucial positions. So I think that contrast is going to be fun to see if we're ready for that. Because um, I, I, Furman's kind of team, and we've already been talking to our team about it, is that, you know, talent-wise, we'll match up with them for sure. But they're so smart the way they play the game. They understand what's crucial in certain situations. Can we match that? football savvy that they have. And that's going to be something we got to show that we can do. I, I love the way we are playing so far, but I think the big key, like you say, is going to be our offensive line against their defensive front front seven. Can we run the football the way we've been doing it? If we do that, I very feel very good about offensively being able to, to score points. Uh, and then defensively, you know, we, we've struggled a little bit, especially last game. Uh, but we are stopping the run. And that was our commitment this all season. We were going to get better against the run. We've got bigger. We worked extremely hard on gaining weight and getting stronger up front. We added some veterans from FBS, a couple kids on the D-line. So we think we're a lot better shape there. But, you know, that, that's where we had to catch up. And I think any coach that goes to any program that's down, you better look up front. That's your number one priority. That's probably where they're hurting the most is O-line, D-line. And I think we've done a great job from year one to year three now of closing that gap between – Chat and Furman as far as up front. Both of them are really good at the line of scrimmage. They're very physical. And so that's going to be a big key. And I think if we can shut down the run and keep doing what we're doing the way we have with the run game, uh, I'll give our, our secondary a chance to go win this football game. I think they'll do that. Sport Clips is like no other place you've ever gotten your hair cut. Sports everywhere. TVs everywhere playing sports. And guy smart stylists who know how to give you the haircut you want and the haircut you need. You don't ever need an appointment. Walk-ins are welcome, and you'll walk out feeling like an MVP, guaranteed. Be sure to ask about the MVP experience, as it's something you just can't put into words. Awesome haircut, hot steam towel, invigorating shampoo, neck and shoulder treatment. It takes a haircut and turns it into an event. Sport Clips, a proud partner of the North Carolina Sports Network.
Coach, we're going to get you out of here today with something we call our lightning round. So I'll ask you a quick question. You can just give quick answers. These are brought to you by our friends at, at Sport Clips, which now has more than 70 locations across the great state of North Carolina. Remember, listeners and viewers, that from now until Veterans Day, which is November 11th, participating Sport Clips stores are collecting in-store donations for their Help a Hero scholarship program. Since 2013, Sport Clips has been the primary supporter of the VFW sponsored program, which provides scholarships for service members and veterans to use at post-secondary schools and trade schools. To date, this great cause has awarded more than 2,700 scholarships, totaling $12.3 million. Folks across North Carolina can find the Sport Clips location nearest them by visiting sportclips.com. All right, Coach, here in North Carolina, we brag about being one of the few states that has cool beaches, cool mountains, and cool lakes. If you could only have one, would you pick a beach house, a mountain house, or a lake house? Man, that's top. Uh, you know, we're on a lake here, Bear Lake, which is beautiful. Got mountains surrounding it. So you got <laughs> my wife loves it here. Um, so we love that place. But yeah, we love the beach also. But uh, we love our lake house with our mountains surrounding it. That's, that's, uh, that's a great place to be. I had a hard time with that one, too, because I love all three. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's one or two vacation destinations anywhere in the world that you would list as your favorite? Oh, um, we love to go down to the islands, like to, you know, down around Jamaica and some places like that. Just relax, man. I When I go on vacation, I like to go to a resort and just eat and just lay up and just not hear my phone ringing. Just get away from everything. Right. That's that's my sort of my way. Now, my wife, she loves to travel. She loves to she loves to have things planned out all every day from from sunrise to till till dark. So um but I love to just sit back and just relax and just get away from all the, the noise. And uh, so just a place to go relax on the beach or something like that and just just um, just get away from everything. It's so funny. You and I have more in common than I thought. Okay. My, my, my wife's like your wife. My last vacation choice was Jamaica. Her last choice was Italy. And oh, everything, yes, that's right. everything, everything, everything was planned. You can trust me on that. All right. Yeah. Favorite bands or musicians? Lifetime or now or whatever? Oh, man, I'm not big on music, but I love any country music. I'm a country okay. music guy. So You can pick any one of these. Do you have a favorite author or actress or actor or artist? Any of those? Um, Not really. Um, yeah. <laughs> I watch sports. I, my wife gets on me all the time. Um, I don't know. I, when I was growing up, Bruce Willis, man, I loved him as a, yeah. like all the action movies he was in and just the way he could handle himself. A lot of confidence. Uh, I, I like Bruce Willis. Yeah. That's a good answer. All right. And finally, our title sponsor here at the David Glenn show is the North Carolina pork council. Do you have a favorite pork product among bacon, pork chops? And I don't know if you've gotten into this, Coach, but there's both Eastern-style barbecue here in North Carolina and Western-style barbecue. I don't need to – you don't you don't need to get in the mess of that debate, but uh, do you have a favorite pork product? Well, I love pork chops, but listen, fried pork chops. My wife will make me some fried pork chops every once in a while. But, um, no, it's so funny. We'll go on trips and pregame meal, like especially if you're – Playing a one o'clock game, right? Pre-game meals at nine, so you usually combine breakfast with maybe a chicken breast and some other things for pre-game meal. And uh, my DFL, my DFL, DFO knows uh, you better not run out of bacon with Coach Bell because <laughs> I'm usually the last one to eat, right? I let all my players go through, all the assistants go through, and there better be some bacon when Coach Bell gets to that buffet line. So uh, bacon, I love bacon, man. I can put bacon on everything. That'll make our sponsor very happy. And those linemen tend to like to load up on the bacon yeah. as well. Coach, I'll tell you, man, I started covering college football here in North Carolina in 1987. I'm a similar age as you are right now. And I've been to almost every football in the uh, stadium in the state, college and pro. I've been to Western, your university. I've never covered a football game there until yeah. this, this coming Saturday. So, uh, thanks for making a fun story happen uh, out in the be this beautiful part of our state. And thank you very much for this extended visit on the David Glenn Show. We really appreciate it. Well, I think, David, what you don't see is just uh, from what I've experienced has been, this is one of the best game day experiences you'll experience in FCS football. 
And hopefully we're going to bring that on Saturday. I think it's going to be a great, great day for us and for our fans. And uh, hopefully we'll go play a really good football game. It's going to be a great, I guess, a great football team in Furman. And um, it's going to be exciting to see us go compete. You know, I, I'm one of them kind of guys that I just, like I told our team, man, we are just, just, just love this moment that we've got ourselves in this moment. Don't put pressure on yourself, man. Just, just fall in love with this moment, with this opportunity that you, you put yourself in to go play against a great football team in front of our stadium and our fans. And um, let's see what happens. And so that's, it's going to be great. I'm excited to be there. I'm excited for you and your guys. Uh, and again, thanks for this great visit, man. You're a lot of fun to talk to. You could be great in the media if you ever finish coaching, man. You're, <laughs> you're a lot of fun and we wish you uh, continued success there in Cullowee. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. You got it. That's Kerwin right. Bell, the third year coach at Western Carolina. He has that team in the national top 10 in one of the polls at the FCS level, and they are putting up some numbers, folks. When I said he's fifth in the nation scoring offense, that's at 41-plus points per game. They have a chance to lead the nation in points per game. Obviously, plenty of football left to play. Uh, maybe their toughest remaining regular season opponent, well, almost certainly their toughest remaining regular season opponent, is a top five Furman team. But the game is at Whitmire Stadium right there in Cullowee. We're bringing our tailgate tour. We hope to see you there as well. Thanks to Coach Kerwin Bell for his first visit after all these years. Uh, he was in other places, of course, and, of course, was a professional football player for quite a long time before getting into coaching. But great to get to know him a little bit and to share his great story with the sports fans and good people across the state of North Carolina. All right, some final thoughts on the other side. We'll be back right after this on The David Glenn Show. The original Saltworks has been serving the Wilmington area for over 50 years. Owner Bob Hubbard and his staff create a welcome atmosphere to go along with their home-cooked breakfast and lunch that simply cannot be rivaled anywhere in North Carolina. Eggs, waffles, hot dogs, crab cakes, and the best grits in the state. The original Saltworks, a proud partner of the North Carolina Sports Network, Okay, that'll do it for today's edition of the program. One last thing, our weekly reminder, please subscribe to our official YouTube channel, Instagram, and Twitter accounts here at the North Carolina Sports Network. Our social media handle there and everywhere is at the NC Sports Net, at T-H-E-N-C Sports N-E-T. When you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and it is free, it's as easy as clicking the subscribe button next to this video box where you're seeing me right now, you are automatically eligible for very cool prizes, including free tickets to upcoming college and professional sporting events, free concert tickets you can attend with or without me and my wife, the lovely and talented Maria, free rounds of golf, again, that's with or without me, free dinners at some of North Carolina's best restaurants. That's again, with or without me, you can choose the Oak right here in Raleigh or King Neptune in Wrightsville Beach two of our loyal sponsors here at the David Glenn Show. We recently gave away one grand prize. The winner had about 10 options and selected four lower level tickets to a Carolina Panthers home game against the Colts. That's coming up in November. No Panthers jokes from me right now. That was their choice as the grand prize winner. We also gave away about a dozen smaller prizes. A bunch of folks chose NASCAR tickets in one case, uh, preseason tickets to the Carolina Hurricanes in other cases, golf vouchers in still other cases. And we will be randomly drawing more winners again when we hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. That threshold is almost here. I believe we're at 800 plus. So please subscribe today if you have not done so already. Remember, whether you were subscriber number one or you're going to be subscriber 999, you do remain eligible for all of these threshold prizes that we give out in the coming weeks and months. The David Glenn Show is an exclusive production of the North Carolina Sports Network. Executive producer Mike Waddell, the founding partner of NCSN, is the North Carolina Pork Council. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on the North Carolina Sports Network.